In this series, you will learn how to model a realistic 3D human skull like this one without sculpting and by only using two reference images for creating a super detailed texture. You can even download these very reference images for free by going to blenderfrenzy.com and signing up for a freebies membership, which is useful if you want to follow along with the videos exactly. And if you want access to even more members-only stuff, like extra videos and the completed 3D Skull model for download, check out the Plus and Pro memberships. But this course is free and beginner-friendly and goes at a pace that is fairly easy to follow along. However, I do assume you are already somewhat familiar with Blender or at least how to navigate in a 3D program. So maybe not necessarily for the ultra beginner. In this video, we will bake out an ambient occlusion texture to overlay on top of our emission texture. Okay, so before we start cleaning stuff up, let's add an ambient occlusion map to this. So that's very easy. Actually, all we have to do is come to our shading. So we're gonna go in cycles for this one. So let's make sure we're up here on our render tab and then choose cycles. And then we're gonna to come to rendered preview here. And then I'm going to switch the preview and the material so that we can have a bigger preview over here. And it's very easy to do if you hover over any of the corners here to where you see the crosshairs. And then if I press control and then click and drag, I can swap it with any area here. So I'm going to click and drag over here and then let go and it swaps those two. I don't know why it put me in solid shaded mode here. It shouldn't have. So I'm just going to go back into rendered view. Um, so in rendered view, we can actually come down to our render pass and then choose ambient occlusion. Now this doesn't do anything. It just shows you what the ambient occlusion is, would look like uh, if we baked it out, which we're going to do. So this is what this is going to do, and we're going to multiply that over our current emission texture. Because an emission texture is something that is just like emitting light. It has no shadow. It doesn't take any light information. It's basically just the strict image. So if we take the strict image and then put ambient occlusion shadows with it, it looks a little bit more realistic. So to do that, let's create a new texture. I can do that one of two ways. I can come up here and click this button here, where it says new image, or I can hover my mouse over here, shift A, add in a texture and then choose image texture. Click new and then I'm going to title this AO for ambient occlusion. 1024 by 1024 is just fine. I'm going to uncheck alpha and then say OK. So if I shift click and put that in here, this is actually you're not going to see anything because we're still in ambient occlusion. If we go to combined, you can see it's just a black texture. And let's open that up here too. Here's our AO right here. So we want this one selected, but we don't want this plugged in. So we want to actually have this, our emission plugged in. So this is fine. As long as when we come to our ambient occlusion, we actually do see the ambient occlusion. So uh, that's fine. But we want to select this one to bake to. This is very important. Make sure that this is selected. Okay, let's pull this out up here. And then we also want to bake it to a new UV map. It should be a quick and dirty unwrap. But right now, these UV maps that we've unwrapped already have just been projected textures. The problem with projected textures is that they overlap. So the front and the back here overlap and the sides overlap. Now this doesn't matter with our setup because we only have the front where the white area is for our mask. And then the sides are projected and mirrored anyway. So it works out just fine for us. But for the ambient occlusion, it's not going to work out. We need a new one. So let's drag this down here. Click plus here for a UV map. I'm just going to say uh, flat just because that's we're going to use that for a couple different things. But uh, let's just make sure we select everything here and make sure flat is selected. I'm also going to put that as rendered. I don't know if that matters, but make sure definitely it's selected. And then U and then we're going to say smart UV project. And that's going to ask us the angle. I'm going to leave all these by default, except for this one. I'm going to do 0 0.005, I think. Enter, and then say OK. We'll see if that, that is OK. Um, let's change this to our ambient occlusion as well. So this is what it's going to look like. And this smart UV project, we can bring that back up here, down here. And then you can change the island margins, you know, just the space between the islands. Uh, makes the island smaller, but I think 0 0.005 looks good enough. Um, now, there are some 
textures that are overlapping here, which again, we don't want. So I'm actually gonna bring this angle limit down. I'm gonna type in 50, and then that's gonna change it. And now you can see uh, they are not overlapping anymore um, for the most part. Um, this one may be overlapping, but I don't think it gave me any problems before. So I'm just gonna leave it alone unless we run into any problems. Okay, so here's our flat projection, which is all over the place. Just Blender decides what it's gonna do here. And this is what we're gonna to use to bake onto. So again, we wanna make sure that flat is selected. Let's come to our shading again. Make sure the ambient occlusion in our material is selected as well. So we've got that selected, we've got the flat selected. And now we're ready to bake. We go up to our render tab, scroll down to bake. Again, we have to be in cycles for this. Bake, bake type is ambient occlusion. And we are ready to bake. Just make sure our skull is selected. Otherwise it's gonna say, we don't know what you want to bake. So here we go, click bake. And now it's going to process here. Um, now, one thing I didn't do is we could come here and adjust these. So right now our max samples is 4096. This is way too much. So I'm just gonna cancel this. We're gonna come here, type in 64. You can do as much as you want. It's just gonna take longer. Um, now this did render somewhat uh, of what we want, but we're gonna do this again. Uh, come down to bake and bake. That just This is just gonna go a lot faster and it's gonna be good enough for our purposes. Okay, so I lied, I'm gonna do one more thing. This noise threshold, I'm just bringing that all the way down to 0 0.001 and we're gonna bake again. Okay, so now we have this, this is our ambient occlusion map. The very first thing I'm gonna do is save it. If we come here, you can see that we have some options. I'm actually gonna right click up here, go to header and then check show menus so that we don't have that hamburger menu here anymore. I'm gonna click image and then save. And I'm gonna make a new, uh, let's do materials. And then I'm gonna save this as AO. I'm gonna change this to JPEG and click save. So now we have the image texture in Blender, which it was previously only existed in Blender. Now we saved it out to our computer. Now it exists out in our computer. So in case Blender crashes, we have something that we can pull back in. Okay, let's plug this in and see what we have. So this is what we have for our ambient occlusion. And let's go back into material preview here because we don't actually need cycles for this anymore. We just need cycles to bake. Uh, so it's been baked. So we're gonna overlay this on top of the image that we had here. So let's plug that back in, bring this down. I'm gonna take this mix node here, shift D to duplicate that. And we're going to plug this one in here in the top one, plug this one into the bottom, because remember the factor, we're, we actually are gonna use the factor this time, controls color two, which is our ambient occlusion. And then I'm gonna change this to multiply, and then we'll plug this one in to our output, and ta-da! We now have ambient occlusion along with the straight emission texture. And I can come in here and dial this in. You can see that how it multiplies the factor of zero, color two is at zero. So we can just choose how, how much we actually want to make it look as realistic as we can. So I like that, that looks pretty good. So we've come back out here, this is what we have. And again, all this is just from two textures in an ambient occlusion. This would make a great prop Again, just sitting somewhere in the background or something as a, a fun, like Halloween, like flying skeleton. <laughs> you can find this video and a whole lot more by going to my new website, blenderfrenzy.com, where you can access lots of free and members only content, including extra tutorials, downloads, assets, blend files, Q&A live streams, and much more. Signing up helps support me, which in turn gives you more Blender content, so head on over to blenderfrenzy.com and become a member today.